Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Alex and today we are looking at this big boy. This portable power station is called Lithionite Raiden. Yes, this is a very nice unit and let's have the unboxing and first impressions and some test of this product. What you can expect in this video, I will show you what comes in the box, I will tell you more about all the ports on this power bank and I also did some capacity test. What you will not see in this video, I didn't have the chance yet to test the solar capabilities of this battery. So in the future I plan also to test it with some portable solar panels to see how this works, because it says here built-in MPPT technology. So let's jump straight in. This is how the product looks like and we have directly here the main features of this product. It has 100 watt power delivery in and out with USB Type-C of course. Then we have 160 watt pure sine wave inverter. This is very important because I tested this Omnipower in the past and this doesn't have the pure sine. Why do you need pure sine? Some electronics are more sensible, sensitive than others and they need this pure sine wave inverter. This replicates exactly what you get from your wall socket. Last one, 200 watt hour maximum lithium ion battery. We will see that this is not 200 watt hour. Probably there is another version of this, but I haven't seen it available for purchase. If you need to see the other information I have here, just pause the video, because I will just quickly show you what is on the other side of the box and not lose too much time around it. So on the back, the most relevant information, the capacity, 154 watt hour, and you can see here the uh, voltage and the current. And I can say that with uh, this capacity, you can indeed, for example, uh, charge a MacBook Pro 13 inch around two and a half times approximately from my testing. From the mobile phone, depending on what battery you have, I would say you can expect between 10 charges and 20 charges. Yeah, if you have an older phone with a smaller battery, you can go up to 20 charges, no problem. If you have a newer phone, you can get maybe 10 charges out of this. They put here 15, so in between, I think this is fair enough. Also very important for this power bank, we have an AC output, so this is rated for 160 watts and a peak power of 200 watts. Unfortunately, I cannot test this 160 watts. The devices that I would use with this power bank normally have around maximum 100 watt, and this is what I tested, but in the future I will search for a device that can also draw this 160. And also something that I like very much, we have a DC output, 100 watts maximum at 12 volts, and we have also a DC input, and you can also use a solar power for this, this is very nice, and you can maximum charge with 60 watts, unfortunately, on this one. I would have liked to see here 100 watts, but this also works out because if you have a portable solar panel, probably it will not be so powerful anyway. The power bank has 1.8 kilograms, so I would say it's quite heavy compared to this one, but this I think comes from this inverter because it's a pure sign and these are a bit heavier. Depending on the region where you buy this, you may have different outlets here, so pay attention. I live in Europe, so I have the European plug with 230 volts and 50 hertz. Packaging is very nice, I'm quite happy they use these big foam blocks to keep the battery exactly in the middle, and we have here a box with accessories. This is not the first time I take it out of the box, I already tested this. When you first unbox it, of course, it has these protective layers of plastic. Contents of the box here on the table, the power bank itself, manual and some accessories and here we have actually the charger. Let's see how the chargers look like and what we have here inside. Let's have a quick look on the charger and the cables provided. First we have an AC adapter with this barrel plug, then we have these two power cords, this is the UK version, this is the European version and we also get an adapter for when you travel to US you can charge it with this adapter. To keep it together, you can put this adapter on top of this UK plug. 
I will not use the UK plug for the moment, so I will use only the European one. Now let's have a look at the charger. It comes with a 38 watt charger. I'm a bit disappointed because this can actually be charged with maximum 60 watts. So I'm not sure why they didn't include it as 60 watts. Of course, if you charge slower, the power bank will have more life in it somehow. But still, I think this is a place where they cut some costs. In my case, I will not use this AC adapter. This AC adapter takes around five to six hours to charge this power bank. I will use power delivery 100 watts. This will charge it much faster in probably one to two hours. I like very much the material. It's very sturdy. It's very tight together, uh, very solid. You see no flex at all. Um, this material is not shiny. I like this because you don't see fingerprints all over this thing. Um, it has here some ventilation because we have our inverter here in the back. And uh, a nice thing about this, even though it's 160 watts, I haven't heard any fan. So I'm not sure because I have used only 100 watts devices on this uh, inverter. So far I haven't heard any fans. So this is quite nice because I have that big power bank over there. And even if you use 70 watts or something like that, uh, a fan is starting to make a lot of noise. So this is quite nice because it doesn't have that fan. And uh, to be fair, this gets warm. I measured maximum 60 degrees here in the back. This is not the best thing to have uh, this temperature around batteries, but I think it works out. I will not uh, use it so often anyway. You can see here also the information on the back. What I really like is that the DC input is very flexible between 5 volts and 36 volts. This means you can use a various solar panels to charge this. And of course it will be 60 watts maximum. What does this mean? This means if you are charging this with more than 60 watts, the battery will be only able to absorb 60 watts. So for example, if you have an 150 watts solar panel, uh, you can still charge this, but the battery will not consume all the power from the solar panel. I've seen a review on YouTube on a very similar product. It looked exactly the same. I think it was an American version. The only difference that I've seen is that uh, they had only the DC out in that version. And what is nice here, we have also the DC in. So you can charge it with this plug. Uh, again, this will be used, for example, for solar panel charging or with the AC adapter that we got in the box. Now pay attention, this is very important. If I power this on like this, this port will be used for DC output. There are some warnings uh, in the manual that if this is powered on and you plug in the charger, uh, you may have some problems with this. You may actually uh, damage this battery if you do like this. This is a bit silly. Yeah, I think the battery should be able to understand if you plug something in, if power comes or if power goes. Yeah, so pay attention to this. If you want to charge this, you first have to power it down. Yeah, now it's powered down. Now you can plug in this barrel and charge it. Uh, if you want to use this to power something, to power some 12 volts devices that use this kind of plug, you of course power it on. Now you see that this DC is uh, outputting power and now you can charge something from this one. Yeah. But again, pay attention, you may damage this if it's on and you try to recharge it. This is the reason why I will mostly uh, use this with the USB-C charging. So for the USB-C charging, there should be no problem. I will still power it off. Yeah. And uh, simply you plug in here an USB-C power delivery charger and it will charge up to 105 watts from what I tested. Now, if you want to activate the inverter here to use this AC plug, uh, you double press this button 
and uh, you can see here the AC out it's started uh, what I can say about this one I tested this one with a razor blade charger 100 watt worked perfectly I tried to test with uh, a bigger one with 200 watt even though I didn't use that energy uh, it didn't want to uh, use it also I tried this with Xbox Series S and it didn't want for some reason to work with it I think some devices are rejecting this I'm not sure exactly why if you know let me know in the comments these two USB ports are 18 watts each quick charge 3 this is nice because you can charge your devices much faster if they support this quick charge you can also now see on the screen what I found on the Amazon page of this product before we continue I wanted to show you here on the bottom all of these are ventilation holes used for the inverter so I'm quite happy I see this and to be fair I'm quite curious if there is no fan inside because I haven't heard any noise this is quite remarkable as I said earlier as well now I already mentioned I did some tests on this not the full sets of tests that I want to do so if you want to see more leave me some hints in the comments what you want to see but for the initial test I did some charging tests and we have multiple ways of doing this uh, what is relevant for me this is compatible with power delivery so on the power delivery with uh, a power delivery charger a charger from my Razer Blade 2020 uh, I was able to uh, charge this with 105 watts constantly yeah so this took around one and a half to two hours uh, this is quite fast normally I would be worried about this but to be fair I have so many batteries uh, where I haven't seen any harm charging them at the maximum power they support so probably I will use it like this in the future as well when charging with this power delivery I also wanted to see how much power it takes to fully charge this so when I charged this from 0 to 100% my power meter measured 180 watt hour of power injected into this battery now if you want to charge with DC of course you can charge with solar panel or with this adapter that you have from AC to DC uh, maximum 60 watts the one provided in the box is 38 watts forgot to put this in uh, if you can charge with 60 watts in three to four hours I say with 38 watts probably it will take five to six hours of charging now I did some capacity tests as well the rated capacity on the back is 184 and um, the manufacturer is saying that we have a, a loss uh, and he says this is 0 0.8 efficient um, to be fair this is an understatement because his product did better uh, actually the efficiency of this product was uh, 0 0.88 yeah so I'm quite uh, surprised here this is good news so the first thing I tested was uh, with this barrel plug the DC out that you have to turn on uh, and the results I got here was 136.51 watt hour this is usable yeah so after all the losses this is what I got the next test was for the inverter on AC and we had also around 136 if I may guess the problem is my power meter doesn't show the last number uh, it says only kilowatts so um, this is my estimation here 130 something uh, from my results I would expect around also 136 maybe yeah and then what I wanted to test because um, this DC out was done at 12 volts I wanted to also test the power delivery because power delivery is at 20 volts and I was curious to see if we will see any loss or something but to my surprise actually we got a bit more but it's exactly in the same range so I would congratulate here uh, Lithionite uh, they actually did better than they promised they promised 0 0.8 efficiency and uh, normally with 0 0.8 let's see how much 
it was expected so normally they want us to expect around 123 watt hours this is what it was uh, written on the amazon page so you see we got better than this i would say good for them so yeah you get what you pay and a bit more this means even after a few years uh, you will still have this uh, rated power now let's have a bit of fun and test all these outputs i hope i don't break it yeah because i will uh, drive this thing to the limit so let's see what should we test first let's test first the dc output so for this i will use a dc to dc cable this device here is able to simulate a consumer of around 150 180 watts so more than enough to test this so the first port i will test is the dc and here we would expect maximum 100 watts let's see what we can get from here we have as we expected 12 volts and uh, unfortunately this drops so it's not regulated let's see how much we can get out of this so we are now around 50 slowly we are getting there we are 80 85 90 you see this drops to 11 volts and uh, let me go with the fine adjustment i expect somewhere around 100 to turn it off so let's see how this works okay so this is constant even over 100 normally the other batteries i tested so far after you jumped a bit over the rated value they turned off let's try to get more out of this i would expect this to drop any moment now okay so this worked oh it didn't turn off didn't turn off but it started to make a weird noise when you go too far so let's see yes so if you go to 110 it will drop to 70 so this is what you can get maximum so i would say uh, the 100 watt is there even more so i'm happy about this one be careful when you do something like that that you have the proper cable this is a proper cable but uh, even this one is hot now at the end so yeah pay attention here i have a special cable this takes a power delivery and turns it into the barrel plug i need this barrel plug to use it with this uh, device because this doesn't have uh, the usb-c power delivery that could take so much power so what i do here I simply connect this into the USB-C port and we can test now the power delivery. Power delivery again is expected to be also 100 watts. So we see here we have the 20 volts and uh, let's jump directly. I will try to do it faster this time. So we are here around 90 and with this one we can get close to 100 let's see so we are here 98 100 so 100 no problems you can get out of this let's try to push this limit push this boundary see what happens 103 104 106 110 okay this is impressive this is impressive guys okay so i think we are more than expected over these limits okay i don't want to burn anything down but you have seen 120 normally the power delivery should not be able to deliver more than 100 from what i'm aware uh, we definitely got here more than 100 around 120 to be fair so you have seen for the power delivery we got 120 i have never seen something like this to be fair 
I'm a bit worried uh, to go over that limit because normally this should have been disconnected at 100. No device on the market that I know will draw so much. Most of the devices will draw maximum 100 watt on a power delivery. So I think you should be covered there with any device you have that is charging with USB Type-C. What I want to test now is this quick charge port. Unfortunately, I don't have this trigger for quick charge, but let's see what we can do with this 5 volts, because probably I can have current for this one and we should be able to go up to the 18 watts, hopefully. So we are around 10, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so it doesn't want to give me more. It gives me around 14. But to be fair, the 18 watts are expected when you have a device that is able to trigger the 12 volts of the quick charging. This, unfortunately, is not a quick charging capable device. For testing the AC, I used a charger for my Razer Blade 2020 and I played some games on it. Uh, you may see here now on the screen how this looked like. Uh, in the game I played, it didn't need the 100 watts that the charger was capable of, so it used around 60 watts, but it was able to provide this power over two hours, so a gaming laptop two hours of battery life on a gaming laptop. This is quite much because normally if I would game on that laptop, I would probably have uh, one hour of gaming. Yeah, this battery added more than two hours to that. So I think this is quite reasonable. An important note when you want to charge these devices with power delivery that have uh, a lot of power, let's say, First, you plug the cable into the device that has the power, so in this case the power bank, and afterwards you plug the cable in the computer. Because if you do it the other way around, if you first plug in the cable in the computer and afterwards in the power bank, the power bank will charge from the computer. It will think it's a slow charger, let's say. Yeah, so pay attention to this. Again, it works. At first I was a bit confused, I didn't know why the laptop is not charging, but first you have to plug it in the battery and afterwards in the laptop and it works. And this is valid not only for this device, but also for other devices that have this uh, power in, power out on the same uh, USB-C. In the next clips I will try my luck with these solar chargers from Big Blue. I'm curious to see if the MPPT in this one will have a conflict with the MPPT in the, the power bank. Hopefully not, but you never know. And uh, yeah, let me know what you want to see tested on this battery. At the end of the video, I left some time lapses for the capacity test and I will also leave a time lapse of this manual in case you are interested to see more details about this. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.